Okay, so today is May 7th. It's a Friday, and it's exactly two weeks since we attempted the first flight, and we had the big brake issue. So um, get a lot of emails and questions about when are you going to fly, or did you fly, and you didn't tell anybody. Nope, I'm still down. It's been two weeks. So let me show you the three things that I've been working on since we attempted to fly. Obviously, number one, we wanted to find out what the issue was with the brake system. We did a little poking around, and then we found out that uh, this brake reservoir cap was not vented. So um, we went ahead and we vented that. It was my mistake. I actually um, I didn't install it correctly. There's a vent in this cap, and you're supposed to put a washer in between that bracket and that cap, and I did not put the washer in there. But we also drilled a hole into the top of that screw that holds it to the cap so it is very well vented um, the reservoir is empty right now and we're going to talk about that here in a minute so i assumed that venting that reservoir was going to solve the problem that there must have been pressure on that caliper and um that's what was holding the pad against the rotor which was causing the heat and so i went ahead and just kind of Put that aside and decided that I was going to take care of the next two squawks that needed to be resolved before we wanted to try to fly again. Probably the second most important thing was the comm radio was not putting out very well at all and we were not receiving very well at all. So did a lot of digging around, scrambling, and went ahead and just moved the antenna. Moved it up the tunnel. So it was originally down here at the bottom where that plate is and I moved it up here. Seems to me that this gives it a better ground plane. I don't think there's an obvious reason as to why it wasn't transmitting or and receiving the way it was. It's just that after I did move the antenna, I also moved the antenna cable which was running parallel with a GPS cable which could have been creating some interference, I don't know. But anyway, now that the antenna is up here at the bottom of the, um, or excuse me, at the top of the tunnel, we're getting loud and clear transmissions. And I can actually pick up the ASOS in here in the hangar with the hangar doors closed. So, whereas before, I mean, if you saw the other video, I could walk right up or taxi right up to the ASOS antenna and within 200 feet I still wasn't receiving anything so comm problem is solved next problem we had to work on was the ADSB out and that took a lot of troubleshooting kept getting an error message here on the Dynon system that uh, GPS from the Avidyne was not making it to the transponder so therefore the ADSB out signal was not happening. And so we did a lot of poking around and ended up pulling off wires. Ended up um, replacing wires. Uh, I actually had to pull this unit out one time to test the connection between here and the transponder. That connection was good. I slid that unit back in, and while doing so, I managed to mash a couple pins at the back of the tray. And uh, I mean, as gentle as I was trying to be, as I was sliding that in, I did manage to bend some pins. So I pulled this back out, straightened out the pins, and then I, I increased the size of the pin receivers on the back with just a small drill bit, just kind of kind of um, you know like almost like a dimple or like almost like a deburring sort of thing on the back of those things I, I went ahead and cleaned that up so that the pen should slide in much easier so that was the, that solved the problem now my ADSB is working so here we go uh, I went out and tried to taxi and no problems with taxiing so I said, well, let me just do a high-speed taxi like we did last time with Mikey. I uh, started rolling down the runway, got up to about 20 knots, and then that right brake started grabbing again. And it froze onto the rotor, just like last time. Okay. 
didn't ruin anything. I got a lot of questions about did anything catch on fire, any fabric or any paint catch on fire. Nope, nothing caught on fire. Really been troubleshooting that. Uh, a lot of questions on the Bearhawk forum. People have a lot of good ideas. Uh, let's see, Monday or Tuesday, can't remember what day it was, I called up Robbie Grove over at Grove Aircraft. He's the owner, engineer, designer of all the Grove brake system stuff and had a long conversation with him. He seems to think it's a master cylinder issue. So, uh, I have two new master cylinders that I've installed on the right side for the right brake. And these are the old ones here. I'm just gonna put these uh, new, well, we've got the new ones back on. And so we're going to uh, bleed the brake system, put the airplane back together, and then uh, hopefully tomorrow, whoops, hopefully tomorrow I can do a taxi test and we can see if these brakes are working. So that's where we are. Um, the next thing we gotta contend with is if the brakes do work, we're getting a lot of wind and rain these past few days. So just got to find that window and then try to make that first flight attempt again. So there's the update. Sorry, it's been a while. I know a lot of people are itching to find out what's going on. People are kind of blaming me for doing a cliffhanger and dragging people along. Believe me, nobody wants to get this over with more than I do. So uh, it'll happen when it happens. And when it does, you'll see the video. So, hey, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.